What I'm proposing is that there are lots of different causes of aging. Telomere loss is another, is, is a main one. There's stem cell loss, senescent cells, so zombie cells that accumulate, all these things. We, we actually, as a field, I'm a scientist, mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, we declared victory over aging about 10 years ago. We said there are eight causes of aging. Mm. Let's put them in a pie chart. We're done, we know what causes aging. Mm. And I'm there thinking, that's great, but what causes those things? Right. Is there a unified theory of aging? Okay. And that's what I've got in the book. It's called the information theory of aging. And it can explain, I think, why all of those things happen. So instead of building nine dams or eight dams on eight tributaries, we may be able to go all the way up and stop the main driver of what causes us to get old, is that there are three main ways to slow down aging, three genetic pathways. I work on one pathway called the sirtuins, mm -hmm. which uh, we can talk about later, but yeah. there, there are crux of defending against aging. There are two others. One responds to how much protein you eat, and the third one responds to how much energy, chemical energy is in your body. That's metformin. Okay. So metformin will trick your body into thinking there's not enough energy, and it'll respond and actually make your body, mm -hmm. we think, fight against aging, right. and, and particularly type 2 diabetes. So metformin is a drug that came out from the French lilac. It's originally a, uh, a natural molecule, but it was tweaked a bit, so it's now a drug. You need a prescription, but, but I'm shocked. Are you still taking metformin? I'm not. Ah, well, all right, we need to talk. Okay. But uh, I'm not an MD. But Why should I, we talk? Should I be still taking it? I don't re make any recommendations. In general. But, but what I do is I take it. You do? Uh, yeah, I don't leave home without it. Can I tell you why I stopped? And you can correct me. Sure. Okay. I stopped because I started to read at least anecdotal evidence because I do lift weights. Yep. I'm an athlete. I'd like to think of myself as an athlete, even though I'm pushing 50 years old, um, that it may have some negative implications on athletic performance and or recovery. All right. So now we're really jumping in fast. <laughs> All right. There we go. All right. So I I've been know, waiting I for today this. for a long time. Sorry. Yeah. So metformin... <laughs> What it does is it, okay. it inhibits your mitochondria. It okay. makes your body think you don't have enough energy okay. and your body will respond accordingly. And you become what's called insulin sensitive. You'll have low glucose levels in your body and it'll prevent type two diabetes. Right. What we also know from studies of 10,000 up to 100,000 people in some studies, people who take metformin seem to be protected, not just against diabetes, but against heart disease, cancer, frailty and Alzheimer's. That's all good. That's what you find in a, an anti-aging or longevity pill. Okay. Metformin's great because it's, as far as we know, pretty safe. It's been taken by probably right. 100 million people around the world. It's on the list of the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines for humanity. Hmm. So it's, it's, it's pretty good. You're not, you're not gonna die from it. Hmm. It's very rare. Consult a doctor as you did. Hmm. We gain another year just because the trajectory of the science, how it's going. And we're gonna talk about CRISPR a little bit later, where right. we might be able to interrupt heart disease and some other things here going forward that'll just, that'll extend life. To, my God, it could be three decades, but but go ahead, go on uh, resveratrol if you would. So resveratrol is this molecule in red wine that right. is thought to protect the French from high fat foods. Yeah. And we discovered that it activates an enzyme in the body called SIRT1, okay. one of these SIRT2 and protective enzymes that's activated by hunger and exercise. Okay. So resveratrol, we discovered as the first molecule that could mimic a caloric really, calorically restricted diet mm -hmm. and exercise. Mm -hmm. This wasn't an excuse to just sit on the couch and eat pop a pill because we actually found that if you take, if mice took resveratrol and exercised and ate a healthy diet, they lived the longest. Okay. So it's a combination, but you want to keep these enzymes active because as we get older, these defensive enzymes like SIRT1, they go down in their activity. Okay. So there are two ways to keep SIRT1 super active. Okay. Besides living the healthy lifestyle that many of us know about and is in my book, page 302, 303. <laughs> Unbelievable. Jump, jump to the, because some people, they, want it, they just right. want the facts. Right, Just right. want the list. Right. Um, but resveratrol is a remarkable molecule because plants make it to survive because plants have SIRT2 and longevity enzymes as well. Okay. But when we ingest that, we get the benefits, right? Okay. Trials over the last 10 years based okay. on our research. And some have failed and some have succeeded. Okay. And the main reason that they've failed, in my view, is that doctors who don't understand resveratrol have just given the pill with water. And yes. resveratrol is the equivalent of brick dust. It's like eating sand, right? We're here on the beach. Okay. If you eat sand, you're not gonna absorb it. Okay. But if you crush up the sand and mix it with things, you might absorb a little bit. All right. That's what we do with resveratrol. And what I do personally is I have this amazing yogurt that I make myself 
Okay. And I mix it with that and it dissolves beautifully. Okay. And I have a couple of spoons of that. So if I take if I'm taking a pill, could I take it with a yogurt? Is that what you're suggesting? That would so? work in your stomach. Okay. Okay. I, I have powder in my basement, so I just spoon it in. Okay. I take about half a gram to a gram. Okay. Awesome. Um, but yeah, you got to do that. And so okay. the recent studies that have actually included resveratrol with a meal mm -hmm. have succeeded in lowering blood sugar. Got it. And there are actually now, I was just at a meeting in Washington, D.C., where they have beautiful clinical data showing yeah. that it works like metformin to reduce blood sugar as so well. This blood sugar concept, because that's my cardiologist, is a big thing too. This is just going to be huge throughout everything that we're learning about the body and keeping it stable and not aging and also not doing, not even turning on certain. Can, it, can inflammation of the body speed up turning on a genetic code that's already in there? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a really good good point. The inflammation is is a problem because if you have inflammation, it'll also shut down these defenses against aging okay. and that'll lead to more inflammation and okay. just accelerate aging. Okay. You know, we know that we get to about 40 and we're still pretty good. We get to 50 and we're starting to feel a little different, looking different. That's absolutely true. And then you fall off a cliff. Yes. That's this positive feedback of inflammation, shutting down longevity genes yeah. and vice versa. Okay. And it just, it, once it, we're on that- I have found dead. that those things, we're gonna talk about them later, like my vision, other signs of aging, really started to accelerate in my mid to late 40s approaching 50. Right. I mean, a massive different. So I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but, but it's certainly something I've seen evidentiary, like my own experience as a human. Yeah. I feel myself aging now at this point. Yeah, so there are things you can do to slow that down right. and things that we're doing that slow and reverse aspects and then technology that can reverse all aspects. Okay, let's keep talking of hormone. Um, there's sort of this cocktail sort of that you suggest to some extent. I wanna talk about growth hormone mm. for a second. What are your feelings about growth hormone, both um, taking an exogenous version or doing things that may, uh, if, if it even works, of growing your own and why is growth hormone so important or not important? Yeah, uh, so in my field of, of aging research, it's, it's debated tremendously. Mm. And most of the, the debate comes from studies of, of animals. Mm -hmm. And what we find is that animals that have low levels of growth hormone live longer. So there's this- Low levels live longer. Right. Okay. But there's something that my colleagues don't appreciate. And that is a lifelong treatment of, or a lifelong existence with low growth hormone. What you end up with is dwarfism. So small okay. animals- Okay due to a lack wow. of development, live long. Oh, wow. Okay. It's also, by the way, known that the smaller you are, you tend to live longer. Mm -hmm. That and We know that from pet dogs. Mm -hmm. If you ever had a, sure. a, a large dog, you know the problem. So the reason is that during development, uh, we're actually slowing down the clock. And you actually, the clock is changing when you're young as well. Yeah. Yeah. But what, what I believe anyway, is having read thousands of papers on this topic, is that growth hormone isn't bad but it won't make you live longer. Okay. Because what, what it's doing is some benefits. It's gonna okay. improve your body's uh, metabolism. Mm -hmm. It's gonna help you grow muscle. But what it's not doing is turning on the longevity genes, which is what you need to do. Okay. The kind of things that I'm doing to get those active as well. Okay. So what's exciting to me is maybe you could take growth hormone, but then trick the body into thinking that it's lacking growth hormone and that you're exercising tremendously. How would you do that? Trick it? Yeah. Well, what I do, is, is the, the combination of the metformin yes. uh, with the resveratrol, and there's the N NAD booster, yeah. okay. which I take. Those are the three main components. Okay. By the way, I don't recommend anybody do anything. I'm right. a PhD, not a doctor, right. but I, I feel no obligation to say what I do. And, the, and by the way, one of, by the way, thank you. I'm, I, I, are you having as much fun doing this as I am? Because yeah. you know all this stuff already. Well, uh, this is one of the best interviews I've done because we're you. getting into all sorts of things that I usually don't get asked about. Wonderful. Let's talk about aging for a second. So as we're measuring aging, I've heard, I've read some things. That, so understanding what's happening. Could you explain to us, is it, the, is it the cell's inability to now read the DNA like it used to? Or what's happening that's causing this to happen in our body? And is what I just said completely ridiculous? No, it's correct. So we're done. We're done here. Ed's going to do the rest of the interview by himself. No, it's serious. Seriously, okay. you, you summed it up probably better than I could, okay. which is uh, the analogy I use is, is a DVD. These old things you used to put movies on. Okay. Kid, any kids watching or listening, mm. this is a, these are old things you used to put uh, mm. digital information on, but they're a good analogy because you can actually scratch them. Okay. Right? And so a DVD is the digital information and our genome, our DNA, is digital. Instead of zeros and ones, it's ATCG chemicals. That information is actually very robust. You can get it 
out of an old person, it's intact mostly. You can get it out of a fossil. It lasts for thousands, if not millions of years. That's, that's the cool thing about digital information. Okay. It lasts. But there's another type of information that controls the reading of those genes. Yeah. We call that not the genetic, but the epigenetic information. Mm -hmm. And epigenetic basically says, um, how is the DNA organized so a cell reads the right genes at the right time? Mm -hmm. And we don't know as much about it because it's much harder to read the epigenome than the genome. Okay. The reason is the epigenome is not digital information. It's, it's actually analog. Mm. It sucks. It, anyone mm. who's had a cassette tape or a, you know, a phonograph or a record player sure. um, is actually experiencing the problems with analog information. Okay. There's generations of, of people now that don't, have never experienced analog in their lives. Mm. But trust me, analog sucks. And our bodies, yeah. half of the information in our bodies is analog. Okay. And that's the problem. That's why we age. Okay. Because the analog, we have an analog system that reads the DNA. Mm. And over time, it doesn't read the right genes at the right time anymore. Yeah. Okay. And cells, when they don't read the right genes, they don't function well. Mm. So our blood glucose goes up, we get weak, we get diseases. Mm. That's aging. But also what happens is that the, the cells forget what type of cells they are. Yeah. They despecialize. We call it X differentiation. Mm. Essentially, we become a melange, a collection of cells that for, have forgotten what kind of cells they should be. Got you. And that is pretty bad news, right? Yes. If you scratch your DVD, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. We've been looking for the polish on that DVD, and I think we found it. Okay, and it is? Well, we call it reprogramming, okay. genetic or epigenetic reprogramming. And it's a set of genes that we can put into cells or into the eye of a mouse yeah. and reset the age of that animal. Remember that clock that we're, we're yes. gonna measure on you? Yes. We call that the epigenetic clock for a good reason because okay. it's, it's actually the analog changes in the cell, right? Okay. But here's what we can do. We can actually tell the cell, now that you're old and you're not reading the right genes, go back and read the genes the way you should. Okay. It's essentially polishing the DVD. Another way to think of it is we're rebooting the cell. Yes. We've got corrupted software. Screw that. Mm -hmm. Let's restart the, 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 the whole computer. Okay. And you're young again. Okay. Right? Erase the hard drive, start again. Wow. But we didn't know that was possible until wow. a year ago. Wow. Wow. That's what's in the book. I was writing the book as we made these discoveries. Wow. Wow. Imagine that. There's a, there's a, a memory of being young in our, all of our bodies that we just have to tell reset. Oh, my gosh. And so there, you're... Do you mind naming the company that you're involved with that I was reading about that had something to do with the retina? Or you're doing it, you're working on it specifically with eyes. Is that not right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. So it's still in stealth mode. Yeah, this is incredible. But I'll, I'll reveal it to okay. all your listeners Thank for you. the first time. Uh, it's called I, Iduna. And it's interesting. The first part of it is eye because we're going to treat glaucoma. Oh my gosh, this is huge. Yeah. And then Iduna is also the Norse goddess of longevity. <laughs> but here's, here's what we want to do. And I'm an entrepreneur just like you, because I believe not just in making discoveries, but making them practical for people. Mm -hmm. Iduna is planning and working towards uh, treating the loss of vision in, in people. This is unbelievable. But if we can reverse aging in the eye, what, what can't we reverse aging in? So it's early days, but what we've just discovered, and we have a scientific paper, if you Google uh, my name, you'll find it. Okay. We were able to reprogram the retina of an old mouse that couldn't see very well anymore, to be young again. So the nerves in the back of the eye, they became young and they com these mice completely got their vision back. This is unbelievable. This is one of the, this may, this may be one of the, the most exciting things that we're on the brink of, that you're at the forefront of on the planet right now. And the reason it's important to me, A, it's funny, as I've aged, I had perfect vision, you know, as a baseball player, I'm, I mean, unreal vision. I could read a street sign from miles away, people, I don't know if it's miles away, but far away. And people say, how do you see like this? And now I'm finding I can't read the street sign from 30 feet away. The, this area where I'm most aware of my aging is in my ability to see. And I have a sister, I haven't told you this, who is um, um, uh, juvenile diabetes, born without a oh, pancreas yeah. that function. And she's gotten to the point where essentially in long stages of her life, she's been completely blind and now sees just to some extent. And so do you think that there's even properties eventually with people with um I mean, massive retina deterioration, you believe is going to be something well, that could be reversible at some point. So I, I don't want to overpromise because sure. it's just a year old and we, we're mm. making discoveries pretty fast, but it's still in, in animals. Mm -hmm. But, but let's, let's just right. suspend all sure. sorts of uh, disbelief right now and talk about what's 
possible. possible. So what I can tell you is the reason that you and I are losing our vision, the reason we have to do this at mm -hmm. night, is because the, the nerves in the back of our eye are not youthful anymore, and they, they're forgetting that they're nerves. Right, as right? we said earlier, yes. And if, if I reprogram your eye just with an injection, mm -hmm. what I think would happen is that you'd get, those nerves would say, oh shit, I gotta, I gotta yep. work well yes. again. That I think we can, we can do. Our nerves in our eye are no different than a mouse's eye, really. Okay. But we did another experiment. We crushed the back of the optic nerve. We really, yeah. like you crush your spine, it's not gonna grow back right. unless you're a baby. Mm -hmm. We reversed the age of those nerves so much that they actually started growing back to the brain even after we killed them. Oh my we gosh. Crushed them. That's an, oh my gosh. So, that, that so if you can do that in an eye, as you said, where else could that eventually be applicable in the body is un, you guys, unbelievable. Now we're not talking a decade. Now we're talking, I mean, we could we're potentially talking people living extremely long lifespans. What's doxycycline? Doxycycline is an antibiotic that you take for Lyme disease and some other infections. It's pretty common. But what's the application here? Well, so we engineered our, our treatment so yes. that we put new, the genes in the eye. Yes. And then we give them ice doxycycline for three weeks. Okay. And that turns on the genes. Okay. They get their vision back. Then we turn it off again by taking away the antibiotic. Got it. So here's, here's a, a fut future scenario. Wow. We can put those genes into our whole body. And as we get older, or God forbid, we, we break our back yes. or we, we injure ourselves yep. and we're not, not gonna survive. We get an IV of doxycycline mm -hmm. or we take a pill mm -hmm. and we become like Deadpool and we can regrow things like an axolotl would chop their limb off and they grow again. Oh my God. And then we stop taking the antibiotic, we're young, and then we can wait another few decades. Right, do it again. Right, so here's the cool thing. Through someone listening to this, because my the typical person in my audience I think works out to look better or eats to look better. And I think the next level of consciousness, particularly, unfortunately, I found that anti-aging has almost become um, an, a space and an area where people with some affluence have been thinking about more than people that are just trying to get through life and improve their stock in life. And I don't like that part of it. Yeah. And so I know there are people listening to this going, this sounds good, I can't afford to get metformin. I, uh, I'm probably not going to take growth hormone, and I'm not sure that I should anyway. Resveratrol is relatively affordable for most people. You could probably get your hands on that potentially. But if you were to give me two or three, four basic things I could do to begin to reverse the aging process for me, would it be the caloric re restriction? Would it be uh, carbohydrates? Yeah. What would those few things be if I'm not able to get myself a couple of these medications that I should be putting in my body right away. Yeah, well, so I absolutely agree with you that we can right. talk about gene therapy for mm. tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, which is great if you're losing your vision, by the way, but mm. but these are not available to everybody. Right. And I just got back from Africa a few months ago. And, you know, believe me, there are people in this world that don't care about anti-aging. Sure. We also don't call it anti-aging where I come from because anti-aging is a whole group of people who are working on other things. So we call it longevity research. But what, if there was one thing you asked me that I could give advice, or maybe a few things. Mm -hmm. The first would be eat less often. There are studies that have been done with my colleagues at the National Institute of Health. They gave mice, who have very similar metabolisms to us, uh, very different um, diets. They wanted to know, is it better to eat more meat or to eat more carbohydrate or more fat? Okay. Big debate. Mm. And the result blew me away. Okay. He found that it wasn't better to eat more meat he found it wasn't better to eat more fat, and it wasn't better to eat, better to eat more carbohydrate. Okay. It wasn't what you ate. All those mice lived a normal lifespan. How much you ate. But the often? ones that ate it in a small time of day, two hours a day, lived 20% longer. Wow. So here's wow. the take home message. Wow. If that's right, it's not so much what you eat, it's when you eat that's important. Okay. And so I've gone on a diet where I restrict when I eat. I try not to eat breakfast, try not to eat lunch. That has made me feel a lot, lot better, I'm sharper, hmm. and I think that I'm gonna live longer because of that. Okay. So that's, that's step one. Okay. And in fact, that saves money. Sure, sure right? does, right. Right, um, and don't overindulge in anything. Don't just eat all meat, in my view. Don't eat all fat. Okay. You wanna mix it up, trick your body. Oh, I'm running out of this, I'm running out of that. And even with uh, resveratrol, don't have to take it every day. Take it every other day, tricks okay. your body. Uh, another thing that's cheap, uh, Get off your ass. Okay. Um, I typed a book, and I, I'm, I think I aged a lot writing this book, actually. 
but it was worth it. But if you don't get your body into a state of breathlessness or get your muscles to be tired and sore, your body will say, hey, everything's good. I don't need to fight diseases. I don't need to fight aging. Okay. okay. So you lose your breath at least a few times a week if you can. Okay. Get on a treadmill. I think 40 minutes is great. 10 minutes is good. Mm -hmm. But anything is better than nothing. Okay. Um, what else is good? So what I do when I go to the gym on Sunday with my son. You go once a week. Well, I try to go more. Okay. And I'm on planes a lot. Yeah. Um, but I have a home gym, so I try to do it. Okay. But I, I, don't, I don't live a perfect life. Mm -hmm. um, it's maybe why I take extra molecules to try and supplement <laughs> that. Offset it. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, but...